Today I'm cooking Darwin style chicken laksa with Lilydale free range chicken breast, Australia's favorite free range chicken. It's authentic, it's flavorful, it's fresh, and those silky noodles are absolutely amazing when you slurp them down. I tell you what, I'm really gonna have to step up my game now, of course, I'm about to cook my very own Darwin style laksa. I've got my tips from Mary, I've tasted a couple of laksas, so I'm gonna give it a bit of a crack. First thing we need to do, and probably one of the most important things, like Mary said, is your paste. So, for the paste, I've got a mortar and pestle, and basically what we're gonna do is add a few different ingredients. If you're at home, you can use a blender. We'll make this super easy, really, really quick, but I wanted to try and be as authentic as possible. So, first things first, we have some garlic, about 10 cloves, so I'm just gonna bash these, get the skin off, um, and then throw them into the mortar and pestle. So, flat of the knife, onto the garlic, give it a little hit, and then the skin should just sort of peel away. Chuck that in, happy days. So, 10 of those, lots of garlic, lots of flavor. Done, next up we have our ginger, about five centimeters. I'm just gonna cut that into some discs. Just gonna take that woody, woody end off into the paste. Next up we have some galangal, very similar to ginger, but a bit more of a delicate flavour. Oh, so good. Okay, galangal. Next up we have brown onion. So I'm just going to roughly chop this guy up again. A little bit of turmeric, this is where you're going to get that classic laksa sort of orangey yellow colour fresh turmeric. If you can't find fresh turmeric, you can obviously use the powdered turmeric, but fresh is best. It smells so good. And then one of our last more fibrous bits is some fresh lemongrass. I'm just going to take a couple of these outer leaves off and then run a knife through. So aromatic. Okay, lemongrass going in. There we go. All right, mortar and pestle time. All I need to do, bash up, get it nice and soft, then we'll add the rest of the ingredients. But if you're at home, use a blender, it'll make it so much easier. Already there, but that's only some of the ingredients. Next, we have some dried chili and some dried shrimp, which we've seeped in some really hot or boiling water. About 10 minutes, up to half an hour. Um, I've kept a couple of tablespoons of that boiling water in there just to bring the paste together. So they're gonna go in. Now, I think a key ingredient is candle nut. This sort of takes it to, I guess, authentic town. But if you can't find candle nuts, um, use macadamia. They have that same similar sort of waxy property that you're looking for. Some coriander powder, sweet. And then shrimp paste, so good. Epic. Okay, back into some bashing. And as we're bashing, I'm going to start adding my Australian extra virgin olive oil as well. Just drizzle that in, bring it all together. You'll be able to see how much you really need to add. You want to turn it into that nice paste. Emulsify it. Yes, look at that. That is looking pretty good, I would say, from water and pestle. A little bit chunky, but that's what you're going to get if you do it this way. In the blender, it'll be super smooth. Time to get cooking the paste. The key here is to cook the paste for at least 10 minutes. You really want to develop those flavors. You want to bring out all the oils. It's just going to make the whole thing so much better. So don't rush the cooking of the paste. Get the pot on. Now, you're definitely going to have more than you need, so... Okay. A couple of big spoonfuls. And as I said, the key here is to make sure you really cook it out for at least 10 minutes. Just manage your heat. Oh, it smells so good. I feel like I'm in Mary's again. Wow, this is looking great. You know, we've cooked it out for at least 10 minutes now. The color has changed. It's got a nice deeper golden color. Um, so what we've got to do now is chicken stock. The key here is to have really good quality chicken stock. So if you can, make it at home yourself um, or buy the best quality you can get. So this is gonna just pour in. Stock is in. We also have our coconut milk. Just gonna pour that in. Yes. 
And really the key here is to cook it simmering up until that coconut splits. So when I say the coconut splits, I mean the oils from the coconut milk come apart and they sit on the top and you get that glossy shine. It'll be a nice yellow color. That's when you know your soup is done. So simmer it away, don't rush it, take your time and you'll have a beautiful laksa. Oh, so good. The soup is looking perfect, it's split, it's that beautiful colour that we're looking for. Finally, I'm just going to add some tofu puffs into the soup. Also have some fish cake. I'm going to add that in as well. Again, just to warm through, get a little bit of that flavour. And then of course, key ingredients. We've got some hockey and noodles. They're going to go in the bowl, as well as some rice vermicelli. Our poached chicken breast. I'm just going to lay some of that across the top of our noodles. It's gonna drizzle over some of that soup tofu puff and then we'll garnish it with all the different ingredients. Gosh, that looks good. I'm just gonna soften some bean sprouts in the soup. Just do it in the ladle really easily. Little drizzle of fish sauce. This is to taste. If you don't like uh, the fish sauce, you can leave it out. Just adds a nice saltiness. Wedge of lime, half an egg on top. Some coriander leaves, a few crushed peanuts. And then I like a little chili sauce, a little chili oil, just drizzle that over the top. Beautiful poached chicken laksa, Darwin style. Thanks to Mary for all the hot tips. I hope she likes it. I know I'm gonna like it. Wow, perfect.